Next, request meeting policy and procedures and public hearing guidelines. Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, um, attached you'll find a copy of the board's proposed meeting policy and procedures and public hearing guidelines. These are the ones that were in place for 2018. The board reconsiders and adopts the policy and procedures and public hearing guidelines as part of the uh, annual organizational meeting uh, today. Uh, the attached document, again, was adopted by the board on January 3rd, 2018, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is there any questions for Mr. Stanley? Mr. Stanley, could we take the time from three minutes to five minutes and for public speaking and make it a, a maximum of 10 minutes. I know the original was a little different. Could be section five. Section five. Dash five. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So make it 20 minutes for the maximum. I think it's, I think that's good. <laughs> because a lot of times we have people who are already on the agenda and uh, it's not that we want to uh, deny anybody the right to come up and speak, but I think there, there needs to be some type of time limit. And I think that can also be addressed uh, to match up with the ordinance at the public hearing uh, changes. So, and I think this is uh, a lot more liberal or lenient uh, than what the current ordinance states. Um, so it would be a total of 20 minutes instead of 15. Okay. And then I think I'd also like to see that it is up to the discretion, discretion of the chairman, but perhaps we limit it to five minutes, and then if they need additional time, they could be granted an additional five minutes at that time. But no more than 10 minutes any one time, I think. So maybe such time period may be extended an additional five minutes by the chairman? Yes. But there again, I think that it's got to be some type of concrete timeline. Uh, so I, mean, I think, that, personally, I think people should be able to say what they need to say within five minutes. It's certainly good ten. So I appreciate that uh, suggestion from Chairman Murray. So <clears throat> I guess we go through those changes before we make a motion as opposed to doing a business and being confused and all that. Um, <clears throat> there was something else in here too, and I don't know. That it limits any speaker from speaking uh, on the same subject more than three times during its 12 month period, I believe. Yeah. So that I don't see any need to change that. Or the, when I'm looking over, is that there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. okay. And it's fall. I was thinking, I was thinking it was a, uh, during a calendar year. So I don't know if you want to change that to a calendar year or just leave it for 12 months. If there's any thoughts on that? Uh, I would prefer to leave it at the 12 month point. Okay. That's fine. Um, let's see. I have another one or two. Section 3-13. And this has been <clears throat> this has been pretty standard. I think we follow the Roberts rules that uh, an item cannot be brought back to the board for reconsideration except by a, a member of the majority. For instance, if a motion fails. And I'm in the uh, majority that, that uh, denied it. I had that right to bring it back. It was, uh, the former votes would not have that right, but I could bring it back. The only thing I would consider doing <coughs> is there should be some type of limit. Because like I said, it's not been a problem to pass, but you know, we can take care of it now before it does become one. So in theory, I'm the majority on uh, denying it. I can bring it back every meeting, and I don't think we want that. So I would like to see that limited to maybe be brought back one time within that 12-month period. I think that is 12 months. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. Any, any suggestions or questions on that? Does that make sense? It makes sense. Okay. Um, well, that says, well, it's for a period of one year. Yeah. Okay. 
board can change and they can change it anyway. Yes, so it yes. should be a calendar year. I think it should be a calendar year. So it would be reconsidered once within the calendar year? Right. Yes. Right. Just for clarification, of, so we had a motion in November, then they would only have a couple months to do it? Again, I think that's more in line with the calendar year because, like Mr. Murray said, uh, there could be a change on the board. And we want to penalize them. Uh, so that's my thought. Uh, Section 5.1 or 5-1 will place the items on the agenda. Uh, is, I think I mentioned last time, too, uh, one of the previous meetings that it was citizen needed more time in a public presentation, maybe that's when we put them on the, the agenda. Um, um, and like I said, right now, supervisor puts something on the agenda, and the admin puts something on the agenda, and the citizen puts something on the agenda, if it's sponsored by a member of the uh, board. However, uh, the final approval of the agenda rests with the chair, if he could or she could. Uh, decide not to do that. So I've always felt that any board member has the right to put something on the agenda. And if that's the case, and there again, this is not happening before, I don't see it happening in the future, but just to clarify, um, we could, uh, if the board denies that request, I would suggest that three members, some majority, could overrule the chair in that case and, and place it on the, the agenda. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. So uh, basically, a, a simple majority of the board could overrule the chair in that case. Right. If, if the chair decided not to put it on the right. chair. Okay. 5-5.1, uh, let's see, Nori Whit did that. That's all I have. If I may say, I think in Robert's rules, it has that in there. Anytime our body can overrule a chair by Robert's rules, by a majority vote, at any, any ruling of the chair. Yeah, I think it's true. But uh, again, this is just all going to be good in itself before we get there. But yeah, it's a good point. The, the, the only concern I have there is, let's say, there's two members that are getting outvoted. And two members see a concern, and the three and the majority don't. Then that person would never get to speak. <clears throat> um, and that is about the point that I thought about. Um, the only thing is, I, I see that less likely happening, just because. And there again, it'd be the same thing though. You know, I couldn't, in theory. Two members want to bring somebody from the public to speak. In theory, they could overrule the chair with just two, and that person can come every meeting. Not that we want that. And I think the other thing too is, if it does, if, it, if you keep it at three, I think it's going to be hard for us for to get that third one because then they're going to uh, catch a lot of grief heat from the public and the media for not allowing that person to speak on the agenda. So I think it has that bit ball. I think the two the two members in the minority will catch a lot of heat. <laughs> Why? Because I know this past year Archie and I did. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. I think if, if we deny anybody the right to be on the agenda, I think we catch the heat. I don't want to call us ever denying anybody. No, neither do I. I have neither. If you look at section 3-10, it said um, a majority vote of those present is necessary to overrule the chairman. So it says um, any member of the board may appeal to the board from the decision of the chairman on any question of order. So that language from Robert's rules is in the uh, rules already, the uh, county rules. 3-10. 3-10. And that's pretty much what's the meeting's convened, though. Mm-hmm. 
That's correct. Right. Do we have any more discussion? Any more changes? If not, is there a motion? I move to accept the uh, meeting policy procedures uh, amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, board committee assignments, Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, uh, in your packet is a list of uh, the board assignments for 2018. Um, certainly up to the board if they want to change any for 2019, but uh, usually we adopt these at the first uh, meeting and then notify all the individual organizations uh, who their uh, board rep it is. Is there any changes to be made to the assignments? I think they're all on, except uh, I would suggest possibly since uh, Mrs. Clavis will be leaving this board at the end of the year. Uh, only 357 uh, days left. <laughs> <laughs> but I would suggest that uh, that perhaps Mr. Sayer would consider uh, doing the number 15, the County Solid Waste Advisory Committee. I don't think they've been meeting very often. Uh, usually, I guess there's a flurry of activity when it comes time to reading the contract. But I would suggest that Mr. Sayer is willing to go ahead and accept that position. Just so it will be a little bit easier transition. Mr. Sayer, you in agreement with that? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Is there anything else to be changed? If not, is there a motion? Move to approve the, uh, the committee with the sign of this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Whitten, are we going to go into closed session? Uh, are we going to vote? Yeah, oh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye.